If you're watching this demo, you should already have watched the demos for try catch, error variable, and logging failed computers to a file because they got us to this point. Now it's possible that I could still run into errors with my my script here. I'm only really dealing properly with the errors from this command. It's possible that this change method could run into an error. And because that's not a commandlet, I don't have a way of specifying ea stop for just that method. Methods don't have an error action parameter. So there is another way to trap errors in PowerShell and it's in the trap construct. Now you do have to define the trap construct before the error might occur because PowerShell needs to have seen the trap construct so it knows where to go look for it. This won't affect what's in my try catch block so you know, probably what I would want to do is maybe undo that try catch and just let my trap construct handle everything. Inside the trap construct is its own scope. So I could still access the computer name variable, pipe it to out file, I can access the log file variable, and I can still specify the append. Let's let all that typing catch up real quick. There we go. Anything I try to change here though, is subject to a different scope. So if I tried to change computer name to something else in here, that's not going to change the value of computer name outside of the trap scope. Uh, in order to do that, I would have to, let's see, probably specify private or something else. You, the problem with the trap construct is, is it, it tends to get weird with the way the scope works. Trap was the only thing we had in PowerShell version 1, so it's important to recognize it for what it is. It's not ideal, which is why in version 2, the PowerShell team was able to give us a try-catch construct, which is definitely the preferred way of dealing with errors. In fact, if you find an older script on the internet and it has a trap construct, think about converting that over to a try-catch.